it's a pleasure to have this chance to pay tribute to Reynolds and to mark my long association with him. Reynolds and I, and the press, go back a good many years, and we've been through a number of wars together. Theory wars, canon wars, culture wars, and science wars, to name the most publicly visible of them. I'm not sure we won them all, but I think we each, Reynolds, the press, and certainly I, came out the better for having fought them together, and on the same side. In 1967, 1987, when I first came to Duke, the university's literature faculty had considerable public notoriety as a hotbed of theory, with its deeply worrisome strains of foreignness, not merely North, but French, and what many saw as radical politics. One of my first ventures after I arrived was mounting a conference with a lot of high-profile speakers designed to educate the public about what was really happening in the humanities at Duke and nat nationally. I was uh, much more naive then. As it turned out, the conference did attract a lot of public attention, almost all of it intensely hostile. In due course, the intensity, if not the hostility, died down, and the conference proceedings were published by Duke University Press under Reynolds' painstaking, often bemused, but always supportive supervision. The resulting volume, titled The Politics of Liberal Education, with an eye-catching and distinctly multicultural jacket, row upon row of faces, Jane Austen next to Confucius, Aristotle next to an African carving, won a bunch of prizes, and my association with the press and with Reynolds took off with ultimately a quite nice bang. Of course, the press back then was a very different place from the one we know now. Much could be said about how that transformation, or indeed revolution, took place. But as one who saw it unfold, I can say without hesitation that Reynolds played a continuously crucial role in affecting it. As acquisitions editor in the humanities, I think that was the title that he had, and later executive editor, he had a true writer's taste for originality and authenticity. A great publisher's knack for identifying virtues in the rough. An incredibly well-informed sense of where the intellectual world was going. And both the determination to see everything through to the end and the patience to see that it was done right. I came to know and value, indeed, treasure and depend on those qualities in Reynolds over the years, especially in working with him on the book series Science and Cultural Theory, of which he has certainly been the presiding guardian angel. Roy Weintraub and I proposed the series in 1995, at a time when the science wars were at their most explosive and we have Reynolds to thank both for seeing the proposal through many hurdles at the time and for fostering the series itself ever since, following up our leads, writing encouraging messages to oversensitive authors, getting the right readers for unconventional manuscripts, appeasing testy members of the editorial board, writing up contracts, and I'm sure a multitude of other behind-the-scenes activities that I wouldn't even know how to name. In all the years of my working with Reynolds at the press, as myself an often oversensitive author, difficult reader, and testy member of the editorial board, I've never heard Reynolds speak even once of popularity considerations or bottom-line considerations. His focus was always on intellectual quality and intellectual interest, on securing and encouraging the top talents in the field, and on producing the very best books we could. If Duke University has a great press today, and it does, it is in large measure because of Reynolds' steadfastness in setting and pursuing those goals. It's very hard for me to think of the press without Reynolds, and I hope he knows how much gratitude and affection and respect goes with this tribute. Thank you.
Bellu, Reynolds, may the years to come treat you wonderfully well. So Reynolds, um, I know this is a big surprise for you and you're taking all of this in, but I wanted to say how much I learned from working with you um, as you were my editor, and I've told you this before, you will always be my first editor. You helped me publish my first book, and that is something incredibly special. Um, I want to show it to you proudly, I guess in the way that you could imagine this as your grandchild or something. <laughs> and and um, as you can see, it took a long time. I'm sure you might remember that. And um, I found that the whole process was um, ex exhilarating, excruciating in the way that um, writing a book for the first time always is. But I was so glad and happy that you were the person leading me through all of this um, on this new journey and adventure. And of course, subsequently, I got to know you much more. And as you remember, uh, when I published this book, I didn't even work at Duke. I didn't, I didn't know you that well. But after this book came out, and then I joined the faculty at Duke, and then I got to know you much better on the uh, advisory board for the Duke Press and other things. And at that point, I really appreciated so much more what you'd done to bring Duke University Press into the very prominent visibility it enjoys now, the way in which you um, picked high theory and literature in a number of areas that you promoted and pushed hard, so much so that that's become now second nature. We don't even think about this anymore, but I understood the history much more subsequently, and it only made me appreciate you that much more. And there'll be one meal with you that I will remember probably till uh, the day I die, I hope, <laughs> which was so hilarious and amusing and entertaining in Washington, D.C., when we went and had lunch at this very colonial um, Indian, uh, Indian restaurant called the Bombay Club with uh, fans from the ceilings and all kinds of wicker furniture. And, um, and of course, this was a favorite restaurant apparently for President Clinton and Hillary Clinton and so we really enjoyed that meal I remember because it was just after my book had come out and we were at the MLA and you sort of took me out to treat me and um, it was it was really a hilarious uh, and fun lunch that I'll remember just for the occasion of, of when it was. So Reynolds um, I know you're probably seeing um, dozens of these back to back or whatever and so I should wind up but let me say I wish you an absolutely amazing retirement. We're going to miss you around here but this is a well-earned rest for you. I hope you will still come around to events. I hope we will still see you and be able to chat and get your advice on things and um, looking forward very much to your staying in touch and see you soon. Um, let me say one more thing which you say really well, howdy. <laughs>